seriously like just don't slack and make sure that you have an umbrella with you because if you don't your camera's gonna secretly hate you and it's not gonna give you any good pictures anymore hello photographer welcome back to my channel it's belinda and this is where we talk all about photography from inspiration to camera techniques to editing skills so that you could take better photos in the past couple of days hong kong has been really rainy and so i thought it would be a great time for me to do some tree snaps while it was raining 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 really heavily and so just like how i've always done my street photography videos this is going to be a video in which i share the behind the scenes aka the point of view when I took the shots and also of course the shot itself and after that a brief editing process in which I manipulate the colors and to fix the lighting a bit I'll also explain my thought process behind the entire workflow so without further ado let's dive right in I had no idea what I was thinking but apparently I was convinced that I could survive this rain without an umbrella so coming out from the restaurant I immediately noticed this corner of a burger shop with red exteriors and flashy orange lights that says Burger Joyce. This would make for a great moody urban type of shot and so I decided to explore a few possible compositions around it and see if I could incorporate some of the passerbys into the shot to make it look more interesting. And this is when I realized how stupid it was for me to not bring an umbrella. I had to stay within areas that had overhead cover. Not only does that mean trespassing usually, although let's admit it, we photographers do a ton of shady things just for the photos anyway, but most importantly it limits how I could compose my shots. In order to keep my camera dry, I could only shoot from under these umbrellas which aren't necessarily the best vantage point for this spot. Because it was raining so heavily and that I was stuck, I decided that I would just make the most out of the mess. The inspiration of capturing the rain came to me. It takes quite a huge downpour for rain to normally be visible in camera and this is the perfect time for it. Here is what you will need to capture the buttery, thread-like motion of raindrops that you could usually see with your eyes but somehow never shows up properly in camera. Firstly, backlight and background. The light that comes from behind makes it much easier to capture the rain because it kind of isolates the raindrop which is otherwise transparent from the background. And therefore, this works best with a background that has a darker color. The rain stands out easier that way. Secondly, you need an appropriate shutter speed. It really depends on the effect you're trying to create with the rain, but the general rule is that you freeze motion at a faster shutter speed. For example, this is what you can get at 1 over 1250 and 1 over 3200 respectively, and you can capture the waterfall motion with a slower shutter. This is what you can get at around 1 over 60. You will also have to consider if there are any moving objects in your composition. For moving people, I generally go for at least 1 over 250 and in this situation, the optimal shutter for me was around 1 over 400 because I wanted to get the person in focus and also, I wanted my rain to come out like threads, not really droplets, and also not waterfall. So I went for a shutter speed somewhat in the middle. As for aperture and ISO, I tend to find that slightly overexposing helps to accentuate the raindrops. Probably because in this case, the background wasn't dark enough for the raindrops to actually stand out. Because the subject was on a similar focal plane with a corner of the store, I decided to shoot wide open at f1.8, leaving the ISO at 2500. And because of this, I ended up getting some clipped highlights and umbrella, but well, sacrifices have to be made. When I saw the street, I knew interesting scenes are bound to come up because the natural light was falling from the top left corner of the frame while the umbrellas on the right were blocking the light, dropping the areas beneath it into dark shadows. If an interesting subject appears in the open area outside of the umbrellas, the natural light would isolate it from the shadows around it, forming a really nice natural barrier. And that was what exactly happened. I spotted this person from afar with a really cute hat slash umbrella. By the way, I honestly need one too. Please let me know where I can get it. So I took a few shots as he moves across the frame towards me until he reached a part of the frame in my intended composition. He was close enough to stand out from the background 
and also right where he needs to be in order for the light to fall onto him. In tree photography, well, actually this applies to anything really, but don't be afraid to pivot. At first, I thought this composition in which the lights were reflected twice on two different cars was really cool. I thought I could do interesting things with it, especially if someone walks between them. I probably had in mind something like this, but I soon realized that it wasn't happening. First of all, the shop becomes way too busy because the lights were everywhere. Secondly, the time cost was not really worth it in this case because in order for that to happen, I need a car to come up in front while someone else has to do something interesting between the cars. This was way too remote of a probability and that my time could probably be better spent in looking for better compositions. And so I gave up on this idea. But soon after I freed my brain from this mediocre shot that I was working on, I immediately saw another way better composition. It's basically the same underlying idea, but much more simplified. I decided that one reflection is good enough. It adds this extra pop to photos, but it doesn't really distract too much either. And at this spot, people were walking up in the street in brightly colored umbrellas. And this is why I started to see how I could approach composition in another way. The colors itself is the composition. I don't normally take shots predominantly because of the colors, honestly they can be quite artificial sometimes, but this approach applies quite well in situations with flat and dim lighting. So I caught this person walking up in a shocking red umbrella, which created an amazing contrast with the rest of the image, in a sense that the window of the car was pale green, and also in a sense that the tones in the surroundings were relatively neutral and muted. I actually took more than just 3 shots on the day, but I realized that this video is going to be too long if I talk through every one of them, and so what I'll do instead is that for the other shots, I'm gonna put them at the end of this video, and so now we can head into the editing process. For this photo, the main fix I had to do was on the exposure. As I mentioned earlier in this video, this shot was taken slightly overexposed to capture more of the rain in camera, and so various parts of the image, like the ground, the umbrella were rather blown out. The middle range was also supposed to look darker in reality. Apart from bringing the image back to where it was supposed to be, I also wanted to add more mood by dropping the exposure as that was the intention of shooting this photo. However, I was also careful to not overdo it and also I had to be precise with the range I was working with or else the raindrops will disappear altogether. When required to make delicate fixes like these to the exposure, I personally prefer using the point curve. As for this one, Firstly, you need some cropping. There are lots of meaningless space around our subject, and this was a picture that I would have shot closer up if I had an umbrella. So I tried out a few different crops and ended up placing the subject somewhat in the middle. The next thing that I wanted to fix was the color grading. Probably due to the overcast, the colors aren't reflected as they are, and so I decided to accentuate the dominant colors in this photo, aka red and blue. This one is again too wide and needs some cropping. I was shooting from across the street and so took lots of irrelevant things in frame. Here, the subject is mainly the red umbrella with the light bulbs and their reflections adding some secondary interest to the photo. I decided to place umbrella in the lower right third of the frame. As for the exposure, to add more mood, I dropped the midtones into shadows and some shadows into blacks. But in the end, I decided to lift the black slightly to get the matte look because the blacks are looking too contrasty with the highlights. So that was quite a bit of learnings and reflections in the rain. If you're curious about what I shoot on, the gear I use, check out the links down below in the description box. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Bye! So for example, this is what you will get at 1 over 100, 120, 1,200, for example, this is what you can get at 1 over 1,250 and 100, 